I am Bill Stowe. I'm with Des Moines Waterworks, and I, I have to tell you, it's such a pleasure to be in front of you today. Uh, City 2.0, wow, what a pleasure to be able to talk to you about water and water's role uh, for all of us. And being an Iowan myself, you know, we're in a unique position. Uh, the rural-urban split that's so often part of the culture of many states in Iowa, we seem to blend together you know, fairly significantly and fairly successfully. How many of the folks in the room here uh, grew up in a small town or on a farm? Give yourselves a hand. I'm one of those, but I have the pleasure and privilege of living in the city of Des Moines now, and it's a great place um, for a lot of reasons, including these kind of fora where folks can get together and exchange ideas. But let me start with a couple illustrations about the real theme of my discussion today with you, and that's the centrality of water in our lives. I want all of you to close your eyes for just a second. I'm not going to make you move or stumble around, but close your eyes for just a second. You, most of you are facing directly south. That'll help you in this, in this exercise. Keep your eyes closed, and I want you to point uh, towards the confluence of the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers. Can you try that? And I'm looking out. You can open your eyes now. You can look out and look around. I bet the success rate of the people who are, who are part of this exercise is probably 90%. The Des Moines and Raccoon River confluence is right over here by Principal Park, Sec Taylor, old Sec Taylor Field, uh, probably mm, a mile and a half just to our southeast. Water is such an important role in our lives. It, we are so attracted to water, so fundamentally, almost primordially, that even though I bet 90% of those of you who knew where the confluence was don't go down there and fish, I know very few of you would go down there and go into the water voluntarily to swim or to enjoy it, uh, which brings up another pretty important point. Water is very central to us, and although we have a great um, community here in a great state where urban and rural come together, our water quality is absolutely horrible, and that has implications to us that I think is very important for us to carry out of here today in what the city 2.0 will look like. Um, and I don't need to set hit reset because the role of water will be as central, in my view, of the city of the future as it has been in the city of the past. Take a look at this video that I think emphasizes for us the global nature of water, but water in so many ways is extraordinarily local. And let me talk a little bit about that, if not regional. Des Moines sits at the confluence of the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers. That drains those watersheds, the Des Moines River and the Raccoon River, drain roughly 10,000 square miles of land, most of it agricultural, some of it on the Des Moines River Valley actually stretching up into southern Minnesota and coming down through the heart of the state. The Raccoon River really more north and west and a little bit smaller, but drains a great deal of land, some of which is agricultural, most of which is agricultural, but much of it is becoming more suburbanized and urbanized. And the water quality that we are seeing here at the confluence of those rivers, unfortunately, continues to deteriorate. And that's an exceptionally important element in my business, which is taking those surface waters and making it into something that you can drink safely. I think it's, despite the very local nature of water, water quality has a huge uh, regional and national implication. This graphic of the upper Mississippi River Valley, which is what we sit in, as well as some other tributaries to the Mississippi, really points to a huge problem just to our south of us. I had the pleasure and benefit of living in the city of New Orleans for a number of years in my life. Um, and I have to tell you, their water quality, interestingly enough, is you know, marginally equal to what ours is here, both horrible. The hypoxia that folks in the Gulf have really identified for a long period of time has a number of different points of origin. Hypoxia is the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico where there's very little constructive, commercially viable um, agricultural or maritime trade able to be sustained in the Gulf of Mexico. And largely it's because of what comes from the waters uh, upland. 
some of the worst waters, unfortunately, for contributing to hypoxia are the Raccoon River and Des Moines River right here that are our local water sources. Does that look like uh, something you want to go grab a bucket of and brush your teeth with or take a shower with? Well, you do, but not until after we have uh, treated it in a way that meets and exceeds federal standards. But that process is becoming increasingly difficult. And again, not simply because of agricultural uses. I don't mean to point to this Hereford and what's going on here as being the sole reason we have horrible water quality in the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers, but it's certainly an important factor and a factor that we have a tendency to skip through in the, sh in the long term and think of the short-term benefits of $7 corn as an example. But this wonderful steer uh, is sitting in Brushy Creek, which is a tributary to the Raccoon River. The Raccoon River um, is the largest single source of our drinking water here in the metropolitan area. I work for Des Moines Water Works, which serves roughly half a million drinking water customers here in the metro Des Moines area. Unlike a lot of other urban areas, we get our source water, that is the building block for the water that we deliver to your house, we get it from surface waters, not through deep uh, wells, but from the surface waters of the Raccoon River primarily and the Des Moines Rivers. But that gives you an idea what the source water quality is that we start with. We've done this since 1871, and I'm pretty confident even in City 2.0, we'll be doing it for another 150 years into the future. But the chore, the challenge, the difficulty of taking surface waters which are impacted by what we do with land, by our land uses and our habits, uh, is extremely important. Des Moines, founded, depending on how you look at it, 175 years ago, was founded at the confluence of the rivers that you just helped me to identify um, a few minutes ago. It was founded by the U.S. Army, Fort Des Moines, and we all you know, probably have a pretty good sense of why it was founded there for defense, for drinking water, for commerce, easy transportation, at least at those times when the river was flowing. But unfortunately, or fortunately, that wedded nature to those rivers makes us particularly susceptible to water quality issues as the 10,000 miles of those two river basins come to us uh, in the central Iowa area. Despite that source water that you just saw, Des Moines, according to Forbes at least, is the number one city for clean drinking water. You know, and, and I wish I could say that that was you know, just a miracle of science and a miracle of engineering. It is a miracle of all those things, but it's a miracle of the money that you pay us to do that. And I have to tell you that those rates will go up as that water quality goes down. So sorry folks, the prognosis is not particularly good. but. In Des Moines, and in central Iowa in particular, this partnership that we have, this sometimes uneasy partnership, sometimes very intuitive partnership with the agricultural economy, with the state more generally, is something that I think City 2.0 needs to continue to consider of how we can work with our fellow Iowans, particularly those in the Des Moines and Raccoon River, to talk about the stewardship of good water quality. I've talked about that confluence. Uh, this confluence picture was taken at a time when there was water uh, on the wrong side of Sec Taylor or Principal Park uh, in 2008. But this city is extraordinarily, and this region is extraordinarily dependent on those two water sources, not only for those of us who live here in Des Moines, but really for all of us who live in central Iowa. Managing water in Iowa is a challenge. Um, as Iowans, we have a tendency to think that water is something to push off of our land as quickly as possible. This year and in drought years, maybe we view that a little bit differently, but my family who farms just to our north in Story County puts down lots of egg tile and is very concerned about uh, water ponding and potholes, not a term from streets incidentally, but a turb from water in fields, out in fields. They want to drain that as fast as possible in most years and move it. Unfortunately, uh, because of the topography of Iowa, most of that moves eventually to Des Moines. But we have a tendency to think of water as a hazard, as a nuisance. Water, for those of you who ever lived in the West, is far more valuable than that. And even for those of us who've lived in far wetter areas like Louisiana or Florida, 
Water is something there that's more than tolerated. It's actually viewed as a source of recreation and a source of commerce. In Iowa, we've not reached that level of appreciation for what water really is. Managing water in Iowa not only involves floods, but involves drought. This is a, a picture taken by the Des Moines Register of the 63rd or 1st Street Bridge on the Raccoon River. Um, I'm sure all of you from this area recognize the difficulty of trying to draw water from the Raccoon River to be able to meet your needs for life uh, in the Des Moines metro areas. It's an ex extremely difficult task, and the quality of the water that remains in this riverbed is unfortunately extraordinarily deteriorated by um, upland uses, agriculture, urban, and suburban. But as we look at City 2.0, Again, not believing that we can reset from our history 175 years ago here in Des Moines of building our city, building our urban area around surface waters, we believe that the city of the future, which is not that far in the future, will also put a huge emphasis on recreational amenities. You're going to hear more about bikes today as an example. In my business and in my world, the idea of having a continued recognition of the proximity of each of us to water and our appreciation for water uh, will continue to grow. This is a, uh, a conceptual drawing taken from a study that's undergoing right now to look at the Waterworks Park, 1,500 acres of beautiful urban land here in the city of Des Moines and working with a number of different stakeholders to look to something like City 2.0 to make a better use of that park and particularly its connectedness to water, which is instrumental in, in my business and instrumental, obviously, in your life, both as residents and in a commercial setting. So more about water will certainly be important to us in how we weave that into our recreational life in the future. And it's always, I think, important to come back to where we started, and that's the proximity each of us have to water. I know I don't have to live uh, at the confluence of the river anymore and worry about being able or having to go to the water uh, for my immediate needs, for looking at it for commerce, but our city and our region are still very attracted to, very drawn to water, and I'm confident in City 2.0 there won't be a reset from that. The water quality that we continue to receive from our source waters, from our surface waters here in central Iowa should be an area of extraordinary interest to us. If you continue to delegate your interest in water quality to the technical people like those who I have the pleasure of working with, again, we'll be happy to clean it and sell it to you, but at increasing rates and an increasing cost. And I suggest to you the cost isn't simply what you pay every month to Des Moines Water Works for the product itself, but in the cost of folks who relocate from this area because they know that surface waters in Iowa and in central Iowa are particularly degraded and the recreational attraction of going down to the confluence in the Des Moines and Raccoon River today is not nearly what it should be and not nearly what we have an obligation to try to work to correct. I ask you to look to the future and look to what centrality water has in your lives and please be active in your communities and in every way that you think is appropriate for you to work to greater water quality in central Iowa, not simply for the economics of what you pay every month to continue to have it, but for the benefit of future generations and the benefit of tourism and commerce in central Iowa. Thank you very much.